What drew you to become a police officer? I was uh, working as a truant officer for the school district of Asbury Park. And I was a dropout prevention officer. My job was dropout prevention. Um, and I saw an opportunity where I could be more impactful to my community to uh, keep people safe and hopefully clean up some of the streets here in Asbury Park. You're a community. You grew up here. Yeah, I did. You, uh, you, I so, uh, how do you how do you make that transition from being a little boy growing up in Asbury Park to saying I want to be a police officer in Asbury Park? Yeah, I get that question a lot. How is it uh, being a police officer where you grew up? Is it tough? You know, the kids will even ask. Is it tough if you have to, you know, lock up people or discipline people who you know? Um, in some respects, I find it easier to a degree. Um, they know who they are and what they're doing, and they know what I'm here to do. It's not personal, you know. So. And the same token, it helps because a lot of the people from here are excited to have somebody from here uh, doing the right thing and helping out, knowing the issues. When you were a little boy growing up in Asbury Park, what did you want to be? Uh, I, when I was young, I think uh, <laughs> I wanted to be quite a few things. I don't know, I wanted to go to the military. I wanted to be a football player. Like most kids in Asbury Park, most guys here growing up wanted to be in the NFL. Uh, and that's what it is. I went right to this school. Yeah, I went to the Obama school, back then it was called the Baines Avenue School, and I uh, played football. I uh, went to college on a football scholarship from here in hopes to make it to the NFL. So that's what I wanted to be when I was younger. And it, so you, uh, how, how does one make that transition from, I want to be a football star yeah. to, I'm going to be a police officer? You know, a lot of guys, a lot of guys that are, or police officers play college sports or play sports. Um, it's kind of a good makeup, actually, because it's a way for you to still continue to be active and be physical. Um, you know, you become like a superhero, for lack of a better word. <laughs> Your mom's still with us? Yes, oh yeah. What does she think my about mom, you being a... She's excited. My family, I remember graduation day from the academy. My whole family was there. We went out uh, to dinner afterwards. And uh, my family's very proud. I'm the first one in my family to be a police officer. Um, in town in Asbury Park. Um, and since then, I have another cousin uh, who's joined, who's joined the force. Uh, so it's been good. The family's been very proud. Um, and a lot of our, you know, my fa I'm from here, grew up here, went to all the schools here, the Asbury Middle School, Asbury Park High School. Uh, so a lot of faces, I'm a familiar face to a lot of people and I believe it does them good and they're proud. Think about that for a minute. You grew up here. Mm -hmm. And, and you've seen sort of a transition in Asbury Park. Yeah. And where you grew up, it's still here, right? Absolutely. The house and everything? At, at low income projects, the Asbury Park Village, you know, right oh. there on uh, Atkins Avenue. Uh, it's a, a scene for a lot of uh, crime since I've been here, since I grew up there. So, absolutely. Um, How's that sit with you in your heart when you think about? that little boy that you were and the dreams that you had and, and where you've ended up and the things that you're doing in a very positive way. And it's, do you have to make sense of it sometimes or does it seem natural? Like it makes sense for me. It's what keeps me going. It's the drive. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is real tough, man. This is real stuff. Do you sit back and think about that kind of stuff? Like, do you think back when you were... That little kid playing, especially playing into projects, you're probably playing, you know, stickball or baseball or, or, or playing basketball or whatever. They're throwing and, and the football around you know. through the trees. Huh? Absolutely. And, and that, again, that's just my motivation. When I'm in here with, the, with these kids, I feel like, you know, when I'm in here with them, I feel like, you know, I know I'm a light of hope. I'm here to continue to stick, to see the positive side, not just, not just of law enforcement, you know. Uh, before the, the country took a climate change and law enforcement became the target of uh, beginning with our salaries being targeted, then beginning with exposing a lot of the wrong things that are being done uh, and law enforcement officers are doing. Uh, before, you know, those things became the, the topic of journalism and media, um, you know, we were here and we were doing a lot of positive things. Um, I have a family, you know, we're, we're people too. And I'm, I'm a person and I want to go home and have my kids safe and, have a great environment as well and a great family environment so when I'm here and being I came from here and I'm instructing these kids I'm doing these assemblies that's what I'm putting my heart into so that they can see you don't have to go to jail you don't have to be a statistic to the street you know I made it I'm from here and you can make better choices and be positive you can succeed you feel a certain responsibility to these kids 
because of that uniform? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, is, you know, we take an oath to uphold the office and to do a job, but it's more than just a job. Um, we're, we're role models yeah, in and out. And that's what sometimes it is, it can be pretty hurtful when you know you have, you're getting damaging um, negative reports or reflections upon what the, what the uniform stands for. It's damaging for both sides. It's hurtful when an officer does something that's wrong in uniform because it, it, it counter, it's counterproductive to what you know, we're doing positive. And it's also hurtful when you have a parent or a community member who says something you know, negative when you know we're here to do so much positive. You know, not just in, 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 uh, in keeping streets safe uh, and proactive policing, but in what I'm doing in preventative policing. You know, so. you, you, do you see yourself when you look around here? Oh, Do you see yourself kids. with these kids? Absolutely. Absolutely. I had my moments in class with some teachers, some of the teachers who are still here. <laughs> so, yeah, I do. I do. And that's how I'm able to talk to them, right where they are. I tell them it doesn't matter you know, where you live. It doesn't matter how much you don't have. It doesn't matter the lack. You can succeed. Nothing is stopping you from reaching your goals. I believe that. I truly do. So. You're like, you're like living proof. You can. You can get out of whatever, and you can do whatever you want, right? Yep. You don't have to do it. I tell them all the time. I went. Doesn't make it. And so now people make bad choices in life, but it was a conscious. It's a conscious decision to make positive choices. Growing up in a tough inner city, you know, you can make the tough choices to not use drugs, to not go to jail, to not, you know, be a juvenile delinquent, or not go to juvie. You can, you know. And I know it's tough for some time for them because you don't see a lot of the hope. But making a lot of good changes. The city is changing. Uh, I think the kids can see some of the hope in the change. The district is changing. So, you know, it takes more than just the police department.